Yes, I want to say a quick hello to Stella Myra, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday! We're thinking of you and hoping that you've been having a wonderful day today. So she often joins us online. So we wanted to wish you happy birthday. Excellent. We'll join together in our prayer of territorial acknowledgement. Let us pray. Creator, you made it all people of every land. It is our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land we are upon. We give thanks to the Mi'kmaq, the first people of this land. We offer our respect to those ancestors who may be interred in this land. We are also thankful for the gifts of the people of the land. Creator, let us be a good mind to reconcile the mistreatment of this land and those who have been displaced. With thankful and respectful hearts, we pray in your name, your Son, the Peacemaker, and the Sacred Spirit. Amen. And we'll join together in our opening song, Here I Am to Worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
has won our peace, and by his wounds we are healed. He has carried our sorrows. We had all strayed like sheep, but the Lord has laid on him the guilt of us all. He has carried our sorrows. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Surely he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. And together, <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you anointed your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and with power to bring to us all the blessings of your kingdom. Anoint your church with the same Holy Spirit that we who share in his suffering and victory may bear witness to the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning, who, 
He awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 103. I'll read through the asterisks and ask you to complete the verse with me, please. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He satisfies you with good things. And your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his way known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy raised on those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a parent cares for their children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over, it is gone. And his place shall know it no more. But the mercy of goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him. And, and his righteousness on children's children. On those who keep his company. And remember his commandments and do them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> the second reading, Hebrew 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such, by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside everything, every weight, and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the for the sake of joy that we set before him endured the cross, discarding its shame, and, and has taken its, its seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself, 
from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit, and we'll join together in singing Who Am I? <laughs>
Jesus got into the boat and went back across the lake to his own town, where some people brought to him a paralyzed man lying on the bed. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the paralyzed man, Courage, my son, your sins are forgiven. Then some teachers of the law said to themselves, This man is speaking blasphemy. Jesus perceived what they were thinking, and so he said, Why are you thinking such evil things? Is it easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? I will prove to you then that the Son of Man has authority to, on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, pick up your bed, and go home. The man got up and went home. When the people saw it, they were afraid and praised God for giving such authority to people. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May nothing but the truth be spoken here and nothing but the truth received. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are all carrying burdens. Some big, some small. Some that feel too heavy for us to carry alone. That's the good news of having faith in Christ. We don't have to carry them alone. We have a God who knows the darkest depths of suffering and despair because he's been to the worst imaginable. And he walks with us in those dark times to help us know that we're not alone. We all need healing at some point, whether emotional, mental, physical, or spiritual. And God knows that and sees that and knows what's truly in our hearts and our minds. Which is why sometimes prayer can seem like a funny thing. If God already knows everything that's on our hearts and minds, why do we need to share it with God? God knows every burden that each of us is carrying right now, before we even bring them to him. But I think there's something God really appreciates about us bringing it forward of our own accord, our own decision. It's almost like a child who chooses to tell their parents when they did something bad. Maybe the child ate a chocolate chip cookie when they weren't supposed to, after being told they needed to wait till after supper, and they have chocolate smeared on their face. <laughs> their parent can see that, and they recognize what's happened. But they'll appreciate it so much more if the child tells them, confesses to them directly. It makes for a better relationship between parent and child if the child is comfortable coming forward about it instead of simply hiding it or hoping that they won't be caught. After all, their actions would be so obvious to their parents, but they may not realize that. I can't help but picture God looking at us covered in our cookie crumbs <laughs> with a slight smile on his face and waiting for us to tell him about it. If we don't, we risk putting up a barrier between ourselves and God. Emily, do you have something? Um, yeah, I have a comment, Dad. Yeah? Um, my sister, when she was younger, she was not very good at lying her way out of things. <laughs> <laughs> she also didn't really want me as a sister. <laughs> so, um, one time when she was like three and I was like, in, like just born, like a couple months old, um, she placed me in a trash can, <laughs> and um, she, uh, when my parents asked her where I was, she just kind of shrugged. Story in love. Yeah. Wow, that is uh, some sibling love right there. <laughs> I bet your parents found you eventually, though. Yes. Yes. Did she ever tell them? Uh, well, obviously, she kind of had me. <laughs> <laughs> cookie crumbs. I was going to say she has cookie crumbs, and she came forward with it, though. That's a, that's a good thing. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so 
sometimes we do put barriers between ourselves and God, and we build those, not that God builds them on our side. These things separate us from God, though, and healing can help. That's why we do things like healing service. Many of us may carry anger in our hearts or frustration or even grief, things that we need to let go of if we can. And we can often do this by asking for forgiveness from God especially if it's something that we've done wrong or feel that we've done wrong and that separates us from God. The fancy word for this is reconciliation, and it helps us to return to a right relationship with God. In our gospel reading today, Jesus seems to see this as the most important part because it's the part that he starts with. He forgives the man of his sins, but for the sake of those around him to see and believe, Jesus heals the man in his body, too. Maybe the two were connected in some way. It's hard to know for sure, but there are many emotional things that have physical reactions, like getting a nervous or upset stomach when you're anxious, or headaches brought on by stress. The human brain can do amazing and powerful things. So maybe this man's paralysis was connected to what was weighing on his heart. We do hear that he was both forgiven of his sins and healed and able to stand and walk. Healing can often be connected to faith. Jesus frequently says things along the lines of, go, your faith has made you well. Now that's not to say by any means that if a person isn't healed, that they don't have enough faith. Sometimes God's time and human time don't always line up. But faith and healing do go hand in hand. Even in the medical community, entirely outside the realm of church or religious organizations, there have been countless stories of people believing they would be healed. And then they were, even though science can't quite explain why. There's also the placebo effect, where something that isn't medically known to help an illness does help it, because the person believes it. Some people might call this a positive attitude or strength of character, but I see it more as faith, even if it's an unspoken faith in action. There's a difference, too, between healing and curing. For some, when a cure is just not possible, the way that they respond to and take in that news can be healing. Often, a person facing their own death is overcome with a sense of peace or has a sense of readiness and calm connected to it. This, though it may not be a cure, can certainly be healing in a way. We don't have to be made whole in our minds or our bodies to be made whole in the image of Christ. What I find so special about Christian community is that we're meant to lift each other up in prayer to pray for the healing of ourselves and one another. Even in tonight's passage, we're told that Jesus saw the faith of those who brought the paralyzed man, and because of their faith, he responded by healing the man. They literally lifted him up, carrying him to Jesus. So that's what tonight's service is for. For lifting up our own needs for healing and reconciliation, or for lifting up the needs of others. There can be something so relieving, too, about telling another person about your burdens, knowing that they will be honored and protected and held in confidence. This simple action can be such a huge relief. It can be a further reminder that you're not alone. What chocolate chip cookies have we eaten recently? metaphorically, of course, (laughs) that we might tell God about. Most parents would forgive a child who ate a forbidden cookie pretty quickly, especially if the child said that they were sorry. God loves us, is merciful, and is forgiving. We'll have a time of prayer, and we'll have prayer stations set up a little later in our service. You're welcome to come up for prayers or anointing for yourself, or prayers for loved ones. Through our faith and through lifting each other up to Christ, 
Maybe we can dust those cookie crumbs off our face and return to God's loving embrace. Amen. Amen. Our prayer response is we praise and bless you, Lord. We praise and bless you, Lord. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise and bless you, Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise and bless you, Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise and bless you, Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise and bless you, Lord. Lord, Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, especially those on our hearts and minds, that they may be made whole. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant to all who are lonely, anxious, or depressed a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience to all who minister to those who are suffering. Hear us, Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore to those in distress soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, Lord of life. Sustain and support those who seek your guidance and lift up all who are brought low by the trials of this life. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant peace to the dying and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, Lord of life. You are the Lord who does mighty wonders. You have declared your powers among the peoples. With you, Lord, is the well of life. And may your light do we see light. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of our souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we'll join together in singing, Father, I have sinned. <laughs> Help me find my way 
father I had closed my heart to those in need, but only of myself, a victim of my grief. invite you to sit quietly and reflectively in a time of prayer on your own.
sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and trust, shall be your strength. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. God, the Father of mercies, has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, not holding our sins against us, but sending the Holy Spirit to shed abroad his love among us. Mm -hmm. By the ministry of reconciliation entrusted to his church, receive his pardon and peace to stand before him in his strength alone, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, who is worthy of all thanksgiving and praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, gentle and merciful, creator of heaven and earth. Your word brought light out of darkness, and daily your spirit renews the faith of the face of the earth. Your anointed Son brought healing to those in weakness and distress. By the power of your spirit, may your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this oil in your name. May they be made whole in body, mind, and spirit, restored in your image, renewed in your love, and serve you as children in your kingdom. Through your anointed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we lift our voices of thanks and praise. Bless us be God, our strength and our salvation, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, if anyone would like to be anointed with holy oil, you are welcome to come forward and do so. <laughs> Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We join together in our prayer. God of all compassion, by the dying and rising of your Christ, you restore us to yourself and enfold us in your love. May we who have come to you in prayer be renewed by your healing spirit and be made ready for the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. 
May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It's there for each and every one of us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. We join together in our closing song, I Watch the Sunrise.